Hello, um, good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about uh, how to make an application uh, for a contact order in respect of a child or with respect to a child uh, who is looked after, otherwise who is in care. The legal principles governing the arrangements for contact in care and applications to the court in respect of such contact are as follows. The local authority is under a duty to allow reasonable contact between a child in care and his parents, as found in section uh, 34, subsection 1, Children Act. This obligation is consistent with and part of the local authority's general obligation to safeguard and promote the welfare of children within their area who are in need and so far as consistent with that duty to promote the upbringing of such children by their families. Section 17, subsection 1. It is consistent with and linked to the important principle that when a child is removed from his family, he should be returned to their care as soon as is reasonable reasonably practical and also to the principle that where children cannot for whatever reason be returned to their parents their identity as a member of that family and the community in which they originate must be sustained and nurtured the rationale behind contact in these circumstances was articulated by Lord Justice Simon Brown, as he then was, in the case of re e open brackets a minor close brackets open brackets again care order contact close brackets reported in 1994 one FLR page 146 at paragraph at page 154H. In short, even when the Section 31 criteria are satisfied, contact may well be of single importance for the long-term welfare of a child. First, in giving the child security of knowing that his parents love him and are interested in his welfare. Secondly, by avoiding any damaging sense of loss to the child in seeing himself abandoned by his parents. Thirdly, by enabling the child to commit himself to the substitute family with the seal of approval of the natural parents. And fourthly, by giving the child the necessary sense of family and personal identity. Contact, if maintained, is capable of reinforcing and increasing the chances of success of a permanent placement, whether on a long-term basis or by adoption. Section 34, subsection 3 entitles a parent to apply without leave to the court for an order for contact, and upon such application, the court may make such order as it deems it appropriate with respect to contact between the child and that parent. The court, of course, also has the power under section 34, subsection 4, on application by the local authority or the child to make an order authorizing the local authority to refuse to allow contact between the child and the parent. These powers give to the court an important exception to the general principle underpinning the Children Act, namely that the court may not interfere with or give direction to a local authority in the exercise of its power to exercise parental responsibility in respect of a child and to determine the extent to which 
others with parental responsibility may exercise that responsibility. In determining an application for, for conduct under Section 34, Subsection 3, the court must apply the provision of Section 1, Children Act 1989. The child's welfare is a paramount consideration. The factors in Section 1, Subsection 3 must be given their due weight and the court under Section 1, Subsection 5 must not make the order unless it considers that doing so would be better for the child than making no order at all. Guidance as to the exercise of its discretionary powers was given by Butler Sloss LJ, as she then was, in Reby, open brackets, minor, close brackets, contact local authorities' plans, close brackets, that was reported in 1993, 1 FLR 543. Although that authority is now nearly 20 years old, the guidelines remain important. Contact applications generally fall into two main categories. Those which ask for contact as such and those which are attempts to set aside the care order itself. In the first category, there is no suggestion that the applicant wishes to take over the care of the child and the issue of contact often depends on whether the contact will frustrate the long-term plans for the child in a substitute home such as adoption where continuing contact may not be for the long-term welfare of the child. The presumption of contact which has to be for the benefit of the child has always to be balanced against the long-term welfare of the child, particularly where he will live in the future. Contact must not be allowed to destabilize or endanger the arrangements for the child, and in many cases the plans for the child will be decisive on the contact application. There may also be cases where the parent is having satisfactory contact with the child and there are no long-term plans or those, or those plans do not appear to the court to preclude such future contact. The proposal of the local authority based on their appreciation of the best interests of the child must command the greatest respect and consideration from the court, but Parliament has given to the court and not the local authority the duty to decide on contact between the child and those named in Section 34, Subsection 1. I hope this explanation has been extremely useful. Um, please leave your comments regarding how to make an application to, for contact with a child in care. Thank you.